The top story this hour, Ethiopian Christians observe Good Friday calling for coexistence, unity and prosperity. And Macroeconomic Committee says on ground reform has revived Ethiopia's economy. Um, President Sisi's regime said to be harassing citizens and abusing human rights. Welcome to our Disney News Hour. I'm Solomon Danye. Thanks for joining me. Egypt and Sudan, which have been utilizing various tactics to disrupt the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, are desperately trying to prevent the second filling of the dam, scholars noted. According to the scholars approached by the Ethiopian News Agency, both attempts are unacceptable. But the GERD has been commissioned and built in line with the Declaration of Principles that was signed between Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt. Ethiopian Management Academy Associate Professor Munda Farah Mulugeta says Sudan and Egypt are hopelessly working to stop the second round filling as Ethiopia overcomes internal and external obstacles that hinder the development of the mutually beneficial project. The Associate Professor pointed out that they are delaying the trilateral negotiations, inciting internal conflicts in Ethiopia and putting pressure on the country. Furthermore, he pointed out that Egypt and Sudan are doing their level best to put pressure on Ethiopia to sign a binding agreement before the second filling of the dam in this rainy season because they know that the second round filling of the dam is a turning point. While millions of Ethiopians are still bearing the brunt of darkness for lack of electricity, Egypt basks itself in about 100% access to electricity. However, Egypt has lent a deaf ear to Ethiopia's call for fair utilization of the Nile waters, not to mention its meddling in the internal affairs of Ethiopia and conflict instigations therein. Take a look at the following story, which somehow tries to show the extreme disparity between Ethiopia and Egypt when it comes to access to electricity. This is Cairo, the capital of Egypt, which is vibrantly luminous in the evening thanks to the Nile water's blessings. Now compare it with Addis Ababa, the political capital of Africa, and the owner of 85% of the Nile waters, which is still trying to make ends meet to even light up the capital city adequately. And the disparity becomes even more shocking if you compare Egypt, which basks in 100% access to electricity with Ethiopia, where millions of its people are still cruelly left to the fate of poisonous smoke simply because of lack of electricity. On top of this, Egypt, which wants Ethiopia to still grapple in the dark, on the other hand, is notorious for its unwise use of the Nile River. The Egyptian claims on the Nile waters are absolutely factually uh, invalid. And the fact that is that Egypt has been mismanaging the Nile waters. Ethiopia is doing nothing to take away from the Nile waters. Uh, but Egypt is, has so mismanaged its Nile flow that it has actually damaged the historical uh, monuments infrastructure of, of, uh, of Egypt near the Delta. It's actually led to poor agricultural and uh, irrigation practices. The very reason behind Ethiopia's move to build the Grand Renaissance Dam is to provide electricity to millions of its people and lift millions out of the poverty line, 
while causing no significant harm to downstream countries. However, Egypt's stubborn stance and lending deaf ear to Ethiopia's call of fair and equitable use of the Nile waters and Sudan's unreliable stance over the dam has been Ethiopia's challenges for a decade now. In between the two nations is Sudan, which has been struggling with unpredictable challenges of flood and which should have been grateful for the dam. However, it is now siding with Egypt, ignoring the many-sided benefits from Ethiopia. But history dictates that Ethiopia was a reliable friend of Sudan in times of difficulty. In the history of uh, relations between Ethiopia and the Sudan, Ethiopia has been consistently struggling for the independence of the Sudanese people, particularly when they were under uh, British and then their surrogate uh, Egyptian condominium rule. So they had two masters, and we struggled to free them from two masters, Anglo-Egyptians. So uh, after that, when President Azhari uh, took over, and also when General Aboud was president of the Sudan, relations were very good. Uh, then when uh, Aboud was overthrown and uh, uh, the, great, the son of the great Mahdi, uh, Sadiq el-Mahdi, was campaigning to be the prime minister of the Sudan, to be the leader of the Sudan, I remember as a young diplomat, when emperor was sending to the tune of $250,000 to Sadiq el-Mahdi to help him in his campaign uh, to be the prime minister of the Sudan. Today, his daughter is the foreign minister. I don't think she knows his story. I don't think she knows the kindness that the emperor of Ethiopia, the people of Ethiopia have provided to her father. And today, she's in the pockets of uh, the Egyptian uh, uh, military uh, oligarchy. It's a sad story. But anyway, I hope she will come back to her senses, read her books, read the files of her father, and uh, understand why Ethiopia is defending its territorial integrity, its dignity, its respect, its independence. Egypt seems to be insatiable when it comes to thwarting Ethiopia's aspire to development. In fact, Egyptian activists and politicians are saying now is the right time to dismantle Ethiopia, also witnessing without batting an eye that Egypt is the engine of the instability in different parts of Ethiopia. Ethiopia is the source of the Blue Nile and contributes over 85% of the Nile's stream flow. To this day, Egypt and Sudan are using 100% of the water, sticking to their 1959 colonial agreement between them. Not being signatories, Ethiopia and other upstream states do not recognize this agreement. Ethiopia is at the eve of completing the Great Renaissance Dam. Costing over 5 billion US dollars, that is being paid by ordinary Ethiopians. This dam will generate 5.1 gigawatt of power, and it is a non-consumptive, eco-friendly, existential necessity to millions. The three countries have been in dispute over the construction, filling and operation of this dam. Even thought this dam provides major benefits to Sudan and Egypt in terms of reducing evaporation loss, silt, sedimentation and unexpected flood. This dam is not just about generating power. It is a matter of survival for millions of Ethiopians who deserve a dignified life as their Egyptian counterparts. One of the biggest events of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church is the Good Friday. The Church teaches the commemoration of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is the sacrifice of God to Adam and his children. 
The day is also commemorated to embolden the Church, teaching that Christians should pray and show mercy not only to their beloved ones, but also to enemies like Jesus did. St. Ayo Tamarat has compiled the following story. This is the day when Jesus Christ revealed his love to human beings who were in quarrel with God because of their sin. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church marks the Passion Week remembering the pains Jesus Christ received during his crucifixion and days. Jesus was crucified not because he had committed sin. Instead, he was crucified to cleanse our sin. He did that to give all human beings his flesh and blood as a cure. So we are commemorating Good Friday in remembrance of Jesus Christ who saved us from our sin. The teaching of the Orthodox Church shows that the love Jesus Christ showed on the cross was the symbolism that Christians need to love not only those who love them, but also those who hate them. The religious fathers of the Church say it's important to understand that man is the most honored creation of God, seeing the price God has paid to save man from his sin. Good Friday is the day when we commemorate the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. What we all have to bear in mind is that Jesus Christ crucified on the cross, shouldering all the world's sins while he was innocent. He was stabbed, whipped, and received much more pains. But he still prayed for those who were doing those evils to him, saying, Dear Father, please forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. In like manner, all Christians shall apply this lesson taken from Jesus himself and pray for those who don't love them so that they can return the favor of Jesus Christ and they should love one another that hate and get divided. Ethiopian Catholic and Evangelical churches have also marked the day with various assortments. The churches have called upon the congregation to support the needy and protect themselves from the corona pandemic. <laughs> The Ethiopian religious fathers and Christian denominations urge for coexistence, unity and prosperity in the country. They also underscore the need to take safe signs from COVID-19 devastating effects through applying right scientific advices. Daniel Kassan tells us more. The religious fathers of Christian denominations who bring together millions of religious performances in Easter celebration have called on all the faithful who are really keen to the dogmas of the religion to abide by all the teachings of the religions accordingly. The celebrations of Easter this year is also a unique experience to Ethiopians as it is being happening under all the challenges happening in the world. The religious father prioritized the prevalence of peace and stability among nations and nationalities and peoples of Ethiopia. Patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church followers for his part recommended all the faithful to take active action against to ensure peace and stability in the environments. <laughs> There is urgent need for peace and stability in Ethiopia. Christians in Ethiopian Orthodox Tohadu Church are called for the peace and stability of their country. I advise all Christians to restrain from ill deeds which are contrary to biblical teachings. Ethiopian religious is not enough to be being a faithful. There is a critical need to be a forgiver. We should not be led by our emotions. We urge you to need to strengthen our internal peace. All are duty bound to strengthen our thirst for the prevalence of peace and stability across the country. Deputy Mayor of the Addis Ababa City Administration for our part also reiterated it is high time for Ethiopians to pass this time with Trump so as to ensure prosperity for the coming generation.
ባህሉን ትውፊቱን የፎሶ በርን የንጅባራን ታሪካዊ አመጣጥ እሴቱን እንመለከታለን ጅባራ ማለት በኢትዮጵያ ታሪክ ውስጥ የጥንት ከተማ ከሚባሉት አንዱ ነው። ነው ጅባራ ማለት ሳይሆን ረጅም ዘመን ያስቆጠረች ከጎንደር ለደስታት ጀምሮ የተመሰረተች Welcome back you watching our Disney news hour. Ambassador Nabil Mahadi met with the Taiwan Dengai Vice President and Chairman of Infrastructure Cluster of the Republic of South Sudan and discussed issues of common concern of the two countries. At the occasion, the ambassador stated, despite change of government, Ethiopia's support to South Sudan is consistent. Highlighting the recent status of the situation in Tigray region, the ambassador briefed Taban about the Ethiopian government's law enforcement operations aftermath humanitarian relief engagements amounted up to more than 70% and restoration commitments of infrastructures that were deliberately damaged by the TPLF clique in the region. With regard to the GERD, he expressed that it is a Pan-African project and intended for power generation, affirming the fact that more than 65 million Ethiopians have no access to electricity. The ambassador said Ethiopia is urging Egypt and Sudan to respect its sovereign right to use Nile water for current and future generations. Clarifying that Ethiopia's position is a win-win solution, he stated that Ethiopia has never an agenda of harming downstream countries. Vice President Taban Dengai, on his part, expounding the deep-rooted and interrelated people-to-people -people good relation of the two countries, said Ethiopia is a giant of the region and its peace is very vital to South Sudan and to the whole region as well.